Hey everyone, this is Frank speaking from the tech marketing team at Databricks. I want to talk to you about this Gourmet Pipeline demo, how they solved the data problem with the data intelligence platform, and how this fictitious company unlocked AI at the core of their business. Talking about AI and talking about business, the core business view is Databricks One. This is where you see dashboards, genie spaces, and apps, but none of the lower level um, techie things that we have in the lake house. So basically I want to get to my uh, dashboard. So I type gourmet and it's the first search result and that's the AI BI dashboard. And um, this donut chart is already showing me the live sales data that is updated like every second. We see the geographic location um, of our stores. So that's a small one in Austin. And that table, that's an interesting one. Again, real-time sales data, city, local ingredient, and a district. But now we come to this marketing campaign for new recipes. Uh, so that's the one for Bondi Beach, which is specific for the location. It's specific for the sales. It's also specific for the folks you know, in this location. So for example, we recommend a medium calorie snack for the surfers in Bondi Beach because they spend all the time in cold water. And then our CMO said, look, you have a lot of customers in Spanish speaking countries, make this translation automatically to Spanish. That's what we did here. And then he's kind of scared, like we would generate something negative. That's also why we do this sentiment analysis. So I switch back to the lake house view, which is the more technical view. And you know, all these architectures that typically start with lake flow jobs, that's the orchestration system that orchestrates everything. So I'm just running that job again. And this is the run. If I click on that run, you can see the graph. And these are the three uh, Lake Flow Connect uh, Ingest pipelines. If I click on that pipeline, you see the Lake Flow Connect uh, pipelines that are running at the same time. And now also this other pipeline is spinning up. This is why I do the ETL processing. You see the multi-tab views. I have SQL files. I could have Python files. And at the same time, the graph is updated. If I click on those nodes from the graph, you see the real-time data at the bottom. So you see the sample data, super helpful for debugging. Back to the job. This is an if-then node. And we have two nodes, that one and that one for AI. So that's batch inference. We create a function, which is this gen marketing campaign function. It's nicely documented. You see the parameters like district, city, country, ingredient. And then again, it's nicely commented like what it does. And you will understand why this is important. The core thing, what this function does, it's calling AI query. AI query needs the name of the LLM you want to talk to. And then we have this lengthy string, this lengthy prompt. But that prompt is, uh, you know, using the parameters that you get from your lake flow pipeline, like city, country, ingredient, district. And this is where you link your data to the AI. So it's not just ChatGPT. For the model, you can select any of these hosted models and you just pick one, you grab the name like Sonnet4. And then once I copied the name, I can go back and I could overwrite my claw 3.7 with the Sonnet4 model. Then. At the end, you need to use the function. You uh, use the function in this great table statement. And this is how you add the functionality. Going to this one, and this is like so different. It's using just AI translate. And that's basically the whole code. It's a single line, translate a description to Spanish and store it under this new column name or do the sentiment analysis for the transcription. Much easier, you don't have to specify the LLM, you don't have to create a prompt. We do all this for you, we optimize it for you. Something else, if you go to the playground, of course you could say, why do you need all this? And you just like, again, we have all these models and uh, let me pick one. Yeah, let's take the Sonnet 4. If I just take the model and don't, you know, don't have any data with that model, and I type in a similar prompt, like give me the, the matcha drinks for Gourmet Pipeline. First of all, it doesn't know about Gourmet Pipeline. You know, it's just creating something like LLMs are fantastic for always creating something. It's giving us a marketing campaign. It's talking about digital marketing, about partnerships, about 
launch events and success matrix, like everything you would expect from such a campaign, but it's not related to our data. Now, talking about agents, an agent is giving a tool to such an LLM. The tool is an, such a function, like a Unity catalog function, the one we just talked about. Now it's assigned. Now, what I want to do is I want to take the same prompt and I copy the prompt, I run it again, and you will see what happens. It's thinking. It kind of matches the prompt calls the new function, and it even fills the parameter for the function, like city, ingredient, country, district. And then look at the output. This is now coming from our agent. And the agent, again, is you know talking about the matcha cookies, San Francisco, and it says medium calorie and... Let's read more. You know, that should be good enough for the neighborhood with the famous hills. And I think I, I don't think I need to say more about this. You all know about San Francisco. And that's it. This is how you can create an agent. Now you probably think, well, that's just a playground. If I could code that, I would be in a different salary uh, class. Well, you don't have to code it. We give you that notebook. You just say, show me the notebook. And then you have a, a template notebook that basically does the same thing including everything, including evaluation of the agent with the agent evaluation framework. One more thing, the function, show you that function. That's the view in Unity Catalog. You see Unity Catalog gets the comments. It's using those comments to map the function that you want to call. Uh, and it understands, you know, if you, if you submit the right prompt, it will call this function. And that's why it is so important to have these comments. So to summarize, I kicked it off with Databricks 1, which is launching the AI BI dashboard. The AI BI dashboard is showing you the marketing campaign, which is based on a SQL statement that is using AI query functions. And those AI query functions, they are based on Lakeflow data, on real-time Lakeflow data with all the data quality and orchestration behind it. And then at the end, you can even use the same UC function generate an agent and then call this agent uh, externally if you want it. I want to say thank you for your attention and hope to see you soon.